you really don't get it. Hey man, I'm a genius, all right? I'm the most talented musician in the world. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the best teardowns of people in popular media as seen in a little mountain town called South Park. He loves to act, but he loves one thing more, fighting around the world. Number 30, Rob Schneider. Say what you will about Rob Schneider, but he certainly took South Park's roast of him in stride. During a time when the SNL alums seemed to be in countless films as oddball characters, the show took a couple of great pot shots at the actor in some faux movie trailers. From the creators of Derp and Tom to Tiddly Dumpy Derp, Rob Schneider is the Derp to Derp to Tiddly Derpy Derpy Dumb. Rated PG-13. The general theme was that the actor seems to keep taking roles where he turns into something fairly obscure. Pushing it as far as it can go, he's shown starring in a movie as a carrot and even a stapler. All the bits are hilarious, but made even better when you see his real reaction on Bill Maher's podcast. Yeah. So they said, Rob Schneider is a stapler. Rob Schneider is a uh, carrot because sometimes a carrot does, and it was very funny. And, right. and my friend, like Matt Selma from The Simpsons, a genius writer, he said they could have been meaner. Number 29, Korn. Back in the late 1990s and early aughts, the new metal band Korn was making major waves across MTV and record stores alike. Back in South Park's third season, the show featured the band in a Halloween episode. And over there's our pal Niblet. Hey, where'd Niblet go? Mm-mm, Niblet -mm, loves potato chips. Niblet. <laughs> it's one giant send-up of classic Scooby-Doo featuring mask reveals and mysteries. Korn is driving a van that looks suspiciously familiar, and there's a whole mystery the gang helps solve. With the actual band members voicing themselves in the episode, it's more self-mockery than anything, but does lean pretty heavily on promoting their new album. Looks like we're gonna have to use our special Korn powers. Korn powers vitalize! Monkey, David, Fieldy, and Jonathan. Form of corn! Nevertheless, it's a nice jab at their expense that they seem to enjoy. Number 28, Conan O'Brien. During South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, Sheila Broflovsky accuses Terrence and Philip of tainting children's minds with their filthy language. This all comes out when the Canadian duo appears on Conan O'Brien's talk show. The bit starts slow as it gently pokes fun at the entire talk show format, but very quickly turns south when Sheila appears to arrest Terrence and Philip to eventually have them punished. Terrence and Philip, Mothers Against Canada is placing you under citizen's arrest! Mom? Conan is shown as having regret for turning the two in, and unceremoniously jumps out the window as punishment. It's far tamer than others on this list, but still a little sour for fans of O'Brien. What have I done? Number 27, Oprah Winfrey. James Fry originally released A Million Little Pieces as a memoir, only to admit that it was a work of fiction. He appeared on Oprah before and after the news broke, and South Park decided to have a little fun. A Million Little Fibers turned Towley into a Fry proxy, and when he appears on Winfrey's show, Things really take a turn for the worse. You lie to all these people, and for what? To make money! They bought your book thinking it was true! Yeah, that's right! Yeah. But I thought you said... How dare you lie to me and make me look foolish! Certain private portions of Oprah's anatomy are heavily featured throughout the episode, including one of them who decides to pull out a gun, take hostages, and make a series of demands. Not only does it mock Oprah's mistake about Fry's book, but it takes a real jab at her personal choices. I've shown my fans that, ugh, ow, what? Number 26, Honey Boo Boo. Given the content of some of the TLC programming, it isn't surprising to find the show roasting some of their more memorable characters. Both the program Here Comes Honey Boo Boo and its titular star, Alana Thompson, took a pretty hard beating in season 16. Kyle catches the show on TV where everything you saw in the real show was dialed up to 11. Jesus, dude. What's happened? It's like something's lowered the bar to the point that nobody feels any shame anymore. This includes Thompson receiving a pig heart transplant, which results in her oinking and carrying on much like a real hog. Honey Boo Boo! What? What you gonna tell them judges if they ask you about your heart? I'm gonna tell them my heart is sweeter than bacon, child. It pushes the already over-the-top behaviors into pretty vile territory, all while giving us the giggles. Number 25, Jennifer Lopez. Roasts of celebrities on South Park run the gamut. 
Sometimes they're a little jab here and there. Other times it goes completely off the rails. But you don't have to ask me. You can ask my special guest, Miss Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez? No way. Miss Lopez, come on out here. Hello. Oh, Jesus Christ. My name is Jennifer Lopez. I eat tacos y burritos. When the show decided to take on Jennifer Lopez, they leaned hard into mocking her music career as well as her cultural background. Depicted mainly as hair and makeup drawn on Cartman's hand, this version of J-Lo sings about her obsession with tacos and burritos. It goes further when the real Lopez shows up and blows a gasket over this impersonator. That's what replaced me? I'm sure it was just a mistake. Only mistake was when this ghetto trash got signed in the first place. Shut your goddamn mouth! Even her boyfriend Ben Affleck becomes enamored with Cartman's hand. It's a pretty brutal portrayal, which is why it isn't surprising that the actual Jennifer Lopez allegedly threatened to fire anyone who quoted lines from the episode. Number 24, Snooky. What is it? It's called a Snooky. It's very famous. <laughs> that thing is famous? Why? I don't know! In season 14, South Park took aim at the whole fascination with the Jersey Shore franchise. We learn more about Kyle and his family's true origins and get some good laughs. As much as the show mocked various members of the overly tanned cast, no one got a worse roasting than Nicole Elizabeth Laval, aka Snooky. Well known at the time for her tantalizing behavior, South Park gave us a wildly different version. Snooky went smush smush. Here we see her more as a wild animal, much like an oversized rat who attacks any man who comes anywhere near her. It's a rendition of the reality star that's both hilarious and perhaps more memorable than her original character. Number 23, Phil Collins. Oh, I think it's a horrible tragedy, isn't it? Let this be a lesson to all future musicians. Should you ever find yourself competing with Trey Parker and Matt Stone for a Best Original Song Oscar, then do yourself a favor and pull out, because the consequences for beating them will not be to your liking. Genesis singer Phil Collins learned this the hard way after You'll Be In My Heart won over Blame Canada at the 2000 Academy Awards. You'll be inside of me. Deep inside of me. As revenge, the creators had Collins make an appearance in South Park, where he was depicted as a boring singer that's constantly clutching his Oscar, which was later shoved where the sun don't shine. Lovely. Put me down, you filthy bastard! Number 22, Bono. Hello, everyone. I, I am, am Bono. Bono. Apparently, Bono is not just the lead singer of U2, he's also an actual, literal piece of crap. When Randy Marsh takes a record-setting crap, he steals the title away from, you guessed it, Bono, who is none too pleased, let us tell you. He can't beat my nine and a half turks. Well, he's going to jail. Fine, but he has to take the crap in front of you in Zurich. But then it's revealed that Bono hadn't previously taken the world's biggest crap, he is the world's biggest crap. The second talking piece of poo in the South Park universe, but the first to take the form of a human. Somebody's been keeping it a secret. Bono was never the record holder. He's the record. According to the show, it's his status as a hunk of excrement that explains why Bono can do so much good in the world yet still appear like a huge turd. Bono could not be reached for comment as he is currently in Africa helping the needy. Hello, hello. Number 21, George R. R. Martin. George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series of books was the main basis for the hit show Game of Thrones. It was a massive success, but not without its critics and shortcomings. South Park did a three-part episode that was one giant parody of the fantasy tale. Mocking Thrones' excessive use of nudity, we're treated to a hilarious song where Martin seems obsessed with one part of the male anatomy. The joke continues through all three episodes and grows even more ridiculous by the end. I can't take any more! But this is the best part! This, combined with some creative criticisms of Throne's long, drawn-out scenes, makes it a great parody of television and roasting of its writer. What kind do we want? He hasn't even ordered your pizza yet! Don't worry, they're coming! Not just two pizzas, there's there's gonna be five! And they're gonna be huge, you won't believe it! Number 20, Caesar Milan. So tell me, what are the problems you're having with the child? Despite only being a kid, Cartman's misbehavior can, at times, be a force of nature that not even his mother can stop. 
Who else then could possibly control the boy? Why, the dog whisperer, of course. No dog is too much for me to handle. While he's well known for his work with canines, in the world of South Park, Caesar Milan turns out to be the one person able to keep Cartman in check. How? By treating him like a dog. See, once again, I am the one going for a walk. This is about me. The child is lucky enough to come along. Mom, this is degrading! Despite the role reversal, Milan actually gets off rather easy, considering he's portrayed in a positive light. He reigns in and owns Cartman at every turn. How's that for an achievement? See, this is the behavior we've been looking for. Number 19, Saddam Hussein. Hello, Satan! Saddam? Did you miss me, Buttercup? A very different version of the real-life Saddam Hussein features heavily in South Park's feature film as one of the main antagonists. Meet Saddam Hussein, my new partner in evil. <laughs> the former president of Iraq is given a whiny, high-pitched voice, as well as the typical split head appearance usually saved for Canadian characters. Saddam Hussein, the Iraqi dictator? Hey, relax, guy. I'm just your average Joe. Take a rest. His first appearance saw him try to take over Canada, but a mass fart killed him. They're using chemical warfare! How could they? This sent him to hell, where he presumably began his romantic relationship with Satan. What's it like up on Earth, Saddam? Tell me about it again. Ah, uh, let's not talk. Let's get busy. All in all, his was a fitting reimagination of one of the most hated men of the 21st century. Well, fitting for South Park in any case. Number 18, Bill Donahue. Where is the rabbit? After he made controversial remarks about Catholic priests during the infamous 2009 scandal, is it any surprise that South Park decided to rip the president of the Catholic League to pieces? You asked for the help of the American Catholic League, let us do our job! In order to maintain the secret that St. Peter was actually a rabbit, Donahue proceeds to murder and torture anyone who speaks out, spouting that it's all in the name of God. By the episode's end, he has a complete meltdown and overthrows the Pope. Enough of this blasphemy! I'm the Pope now! That means I am the voice of God! Planning to kill anyone who's in his way. Luckily, Jesus shows up in the nick of time and puts an end to Donahue's tyranny. Number 17, Kathleen Kennedy. Will you check under the bed and make sure there's no Disney executives under there? I promise there's not. I'm scared, Mom. Will you please just look and make sure Kathleen Kennedy isn't under my bed? South Park joining the Panderverse dove straight into the topic of modern media's obsession with diversity. Times have changed, and more cultures want better representation in the media. South Park used this episode to eviscerate Disney's choices in trying to modernize their film and television catalog. We keep making the same movie over and over and pandering to everyone, but suddenly it's not working. Then we've got to pander harder! Look, I don't want to have to say it, but I think the problem is Kathleen Kennedy. Having previously gone after Mickey, it was Kathleen Kennedy who took the brunt of the show's evisceration here. She's shown as an angry leader who insists on changing every lead character to fit the whole woke agenda. Aside from the fact that she doesn't run all of Disney, it's still a pretty dark depiction of what the studio has been doing, and we wonder what Kennedy's take on this would have been. Number 16, Tom Cruise. So you're not the prophet, huh? You made me look stupid. I'm gonna sue you, too! Well, fine! Go ahead and sue me! I will! I'll sue you in England! All aspects of Cruz's controversial personality and lifestyle are heavily parodied in the classic and controversial episode Trapped in the Closet. Whoa, 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 whoa. The frozen alien bodies were loaded onto Xenu's galactic cruisers, which looked like DC-8s, except with rocket engines. When he's led to believe that Stan is the reincarnation of Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard, Cruz sycophantically seeks his approval. Elron? Elron! It really is you! Oh, this is the greatest day of my life. Ah, uh, dude, I need to go to bed. He's utterly devastated when Stan admits he's not as good an actor as some others in Hollywood. So he barricades himself away and waits for various celebs to attempt to lure him out of the literal closet. Tom? Tom, it's Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Tom, don't you think this has gone on long enough? It's time for you to come out of the closet! The real-life Cruz had a rerun of the episode Banned, an act that likely fueled subsequent shots at Tom in later South Park episodes. What did you call me? Number 15, Michael Bay. Mr. Bay, can you think of any ideas how to outwit these terrorists? It may only be a short cameo, but that's all South Park needs to discredit this director. After he's brought in as a consultant on how to deal with a terrorist threat, all Bay can do is spout off ideas for special effects. 
the military council eventually calls him out on it and demands ideas instead. But of course, Bay being Bay, he doesn't know the difference. We start by making a big CG building, and then we have a meteor go crash, and it, and it's all like crawl. And, and motorcycles burst into flame while they jump over these helicopters, right? We didn't think it was possible to burn a celebrity this badly in 30 seconds, but once again, Matt Stone and Trey Parker find a way. Those aren't ideas, those are special effects. I don't understand the difference. Number 14, Michael Jackson. Here I am, blanket. <laughs> Despite his alias of Michael Jefferson, it's obvious who South Park is targeting here. Guys, this is my dad, Michael Je Jefferson. Michael Jefferson, yeah. Hey, you want to play with me? The childish singer has made numerous appearances over the years, most notably in the episode when he moves to South Park to get away from the constant accusations. I'm sick and tired of people harassing Mr. Jefferson. All I've been hearing since Mr. Jefferson moved here are sick lies. After his neglected son Blanket makes friends with Stan, Kyle, Kenny, and Cartman, Jackson, sorry, Jefferson tries to join the fun as a way of living out the childhood he missed. Would you like to ride the train with me and start a magical journey? Yes, I would. Mr. Jefferson, you're so awesome. Mr. Jefferson. Even as a ghost or a hologram, the infantile MJ can't deal with what people say about him. So ignorant. You guys are ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Number 13, Rob Reiner. Don't they know how dangerous it is to their health? Don't they know the hazard of secondhand smoke? He's given us The Princess Bride, Stand By Me, and a few other good flicks, which in South Park just gets you portrayed as an arrogant mess of a man who cares more about pushing his ideas onto people than actually following his own creed. I will end smoking in bars in Colorado. There will be no more smoking. <laughs> Isn't he awesome, you guys? When the boys blame the tobacco industry for their smoking, Reiner rallies the town against it by means of creating a commercial that nearly kills the kids for the sake of realism. It's probably not the best idea to take health advice from a man full of green goo. My goo! My precious goo! <laughs> Number 12, Barbara Streisand. Hey, no wonder that Barbara Streisand lady wanted it. Oh, <laughs> who was that? Oh, just this really, really old lady who wishes she was still only 45. <laughs> the singer has been cited as Matt Stone and Trey Parker's most hated celebrity, and she certainly gets one of the more abstract treatments of any famous person. Depicted as Mecha Streisand, she destroys South Park after obtaining an ancient artifact from the boys by torturing them with her singing. I don't know how much more I can take, dude. All right. You asked for it! I'm gonna tell you now. No! It takes the likes of Leonard Malton, Sidney Poitier, and Robert Smith of The Cure to eventually destroy her with their kaiju transformation abilities. But Tom Cruise and his fellow pissed off celebrities later revive her. Great Scott! It's Barbara Streisand! <laughs> I thought Barbara Streisand had been destroyed by the Robert Smith. This time? Only a duet with Neil Diamond can mollify the gargantuan robotic musical diva. Well, that's because I loved you, girl. And I still love you now. What have you got to say? <laughs> Number 11, John Edward. I'm not a douche. What if I really believe dead people talk to me? Then you're a stupid douche. In what has to be one of the most scathing renditions of a celebrity ever animated, Stan summarizes why this TV psychic is the ultimate douchebag. I am saying this to you, John Edward. You are a liar. You are a fake. He's immediately shown to be fake. But the show goes to great lengths to explain how his supposed communication with the dead is extremely harmful, not only for the grieving individuals who are suckered into his con, but also for humanity as a whole. You aren't just lying, you're slowing down the progress of all mankind. As a person, Edward is shown to be insecure, self-absorbed, and yeah, just a total douche. Ah, now come on now! Number 10, Mickey Mouse. What's all this I'm hearing about not wearing the purity rings, huh? <laughs> it started with the Jonas Brothers, where Mickey was shown to be a violent mob-like boss to his employees. When he got caught, he turned into a Godzilla-sized monster and tried to torch everyone. Then we got multiple episodes of his antics in China with Randy, which may have led to the COVID-19 pandemic. Throw in his obsession with illicit substances and additional antics, and this show has never shied away from tearing the Disney mascot a new one. Why don't you just tell me where the missing ballots are? It'll make your death a lot less painful. 
Given that Steamboat Willie is now in the public domain, we're curious to see how South Park will extend their illustration of Mickey even further. Number 9. Al Gore And someday, when the world is rid of Man Bear Pig, everyone will say, Thank you, Al Gore. You're super awesome. Excelsior! Poor Al has done a lot of good in his career, but if that were to stop Matt Stone and Trey Parker from mocking the former vice president, what kind of satirists would they be? This is the end of you, Man Bear Pig. This version of Gore is perfectly detached from reality, living in a world where an animal can be half man, half bear, and half pig all at the same time. I've killed MVP, and now I must save the world from something else. Maybe I'll make a movie. A movie starring me. Then people will take me super serial. Excelsior! Depicted as unstable and almost insane when it comes to a search for the imaginary man bear pig, Gore is sometimes seen wearing a cape while running around pretending to fly. It is a creature which roams the earth alone. It is half man, half bear, and half pig. Number 8. James Cameron This is it! Throttle down! He's directed some of the most successful movies of all time, set a record by traveling deeper into the Mariana Trench than anyone else, and has one hell of a catchy theme song. His name is James, James Cameron, the bravest pioneer. No budget too steep, no seat too deep. Who's that? It's him, James Cameron. On a mission to raise the bar of humanity, which dropped to new lows after we accepted Honey Boo Boo, Cameron once again descends into the darkness of the ocean encountering Randy Newman along the way. I've been diving in the deep and I'm feeling so cheap. While everyone else seems bored of his exploits, we can't get enough of them. Oh, and congrats on being the only Canadian in South Park who doesn't look like, well, every other Canadian. James Cameron does what James Cameron does because James Cameron is James Cameron. Number seven, Paris Hilton. What does she do? She's super rich. But what does she do? She's totally spoiled and snobby. What does she do? Hilton is perhaps the definition of a celebrity. She's only really famous for being famous, and the South Park creators really let her have it. Not only do they exaggerate the hotel heiress's reputation, Sorry if I'm a little spent. I did a whole lot of partying last night. But also, all of her previous pets have taken their own lives. So she buys Butters and stuffs him into a bear suit to be her next pet. Uh, my sort of girlfriend dressed me up like this. Your girlfriend? There you are, Mr. Biggles! Oh, I thought I'd lost you! Promise you'll never leave me! To top it off, she enters a competition with Mr. Slave, which doesn't end well. It's definitely a harsh end for Paris, even in the South Park world. Number 6. Caitlyn Jenner I'm not going to apologize for saying Caitlyn Jenner isn't a hero! Her transition caused a media storm, so of course South Park was going to take a stab at her. Contradicting popular opinion, Kyle makes a hateful statement about her coming out as transgender, and that she's getting caught up in her own publicity. I thought we were all on board that Caitlyn Jenner is an amazing, beautiful woman who had the exquisite bravery of a butterfly flying against the wind. She also goes on to become the Vice President of the United States after running alongside Donald Trump, uh, we mean Garrison. Thanks to her new position of power, we've been able to witness what she's been up to in several episodes. Buckle up, buckaroo! Number 5. Russell Crowe Born in New Zealand in 64, a hot-headed actor named Russell Crowe. He loves to act, but he loves one thing more, fighting around the world. This Australian actor aptly has a show called Russell Crowe Fighting Around the World, and that title really says it all. Fighting around the world, Russell Crowe. Crowe randomly beats people up who are even slightly critical about his work, and even a few who aren't, to be honest. Dude, the director said to cut it. My fighting is poetry! You don't edit Russell Crowe's poetry, you testicle! <laughs> Along with his good friend Tugger, a boat, the incredibly offensive Australian beats up folks. Oh my god, it's Russell Crowe! Oh my god, Why don't you mind your own business, you scrout oh. Perhaps worst of all, he even beats up a cancer patient in a misguided attempt to fight cancer itself. Even poor Tugger grows tired of Crow's antics in the end. Take your love, I gotta take it. Number 4. R. Kelly I was just standing here, and Tom Cruise locked himself in the closet. And 
Ask myself why won't Tom Cruise just come out the closet? This is another quick cameo, but one that blends so well with the episode's hilarious premise that we couldn't bring ourselves to not include it. With Tom Cruise refusing to come out of the closet, literally of course, the police get this R&B singer to try and persuade him. I calm myself down. And I pull out my gun! <laughs> oh, Jesus. In a callback to Kelly's infamous opera, Trapped in the Closet, he tries to serenade Cruz to come out, only to end up locked up with him. And all this just adds another layer of crazy to this episode. How big is that closet anyway? Now I'm in the closet. Now I'm in the closet too. Number three, Mel Gibson. How dare you call me crazy? This means war! <laughs> He's one of the few South Park characters to have his real face used for his parody. Jesus, oh how I love you, how I love you, Jesus! When Stan and Kenny travel to Gibson's house to get their money back for the Passion of the Christ, he promptly strips off and asks the boys to torture him, as you do. Ha! So you do intend to torture me, huh? Well, go ahead! Do your worst! You still won't get your ticket money back! I can take whatever you can dish out! He's hilariously unhinged and ends this brilliant episode by, well, doing this. I guess now you're gonna start torturing me! Ugh! Oh, my nipples are so tender, don't squeeze them anymore! That's Mel Gibson. And to think, this episode actually came out two years before Gibson's reputation went down the tubes. Number two, Lord. Randy Marsh is Lord. That's about the gist of it. Yet somehow, the way the show approaches the idea of Randy having a double life as the New Zealand pop star makes it work. Yeah, and then finally yeah, I use the yeah, auto-tune. Yeah. While no one seems to be able to see through Randy's flimsy disguise, which is limited to throwing on a dress and yelling out that he is Lord, there's also an odd sincerity to this running gag. Okay, uh, uh yeah, 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 yeah. Aside from the obvious joke of having Stan's dad pose as a young female singer, the way the character speaks so highly of her kind of makes us want Randy and Lord to be the same person. We are sure she was flattered. Oh right, I forgot to tell you that part. I'm actually Lord. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Kanye West. Hey man, I'm a genius, all right? I'm the most talented musician in the world. Never have fish sticks been so funny. Well, unless you're Yeezy. No, because you said you like fish sticks, Kanye. Don't, don't you get it? You see, fish dicks is a, is a play on words. Apparently Kanye is the only one who doesn't understand the childish gag as he goes on a murderous rampage in his attempt to have the joke explained. I ain't gonna hurt you. I pay people to do that for me. Oh shit, oh no man, come on, I got no dick, man. Now content, he wastes no time mingling with other seafaring creatures. He eventually sets his ego aside and accepts his life as a gay fish. I wanted to be free with other creatures like me and now I got my wish. Cause I know that I'm a gay fish, gay fish. However, he eventually decides to marry a hobbit. If she was here, you could all see for yourself how beautiful she is. But she can't be here because she has a movie coming out on Friday, directed by Peter Jackson, called The Hobbit. This depiction perfectly captures the rapper's egotistical nature while throwing in just enough trademark South Park randomness to make this the ultimate celebrity send up. My girl ain't no hobbit. Please God tell me I'm not engaged to no hobbit. Did we miss a great jab at someone famous on screen? Let us know in the comments below. Then people will take me super serial. Excelsior! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.